What's up, girl gang? Welcome back to the girls' room. We're at episode 20, girls and guys. Oh, and look who's joining me. I love when she wants to hang out with her mom. She's a teenager and she never wants to anymore. That's not true. She's literally up my ass. <laughs> I can't believe you could lay on me, baby. Okay. She is congratulating me for 20 episodes. I think it's 20 episodes. I should probably check. No, it definitely is. Last week was episode 19, and I can't believe that I am at episode 20 of this podcast. Holy shit. It's really... Okay, baby. Oh, you stinky breath girl. <laughs> um, it's pretty wild, but I am so proud of myself. She's proud of me, too. She knows her mommy's trying to build a better life for her and get her backyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't thank you guys enough. I always say this, but it's so important to show gratitude at all times. I was feeling like absolute dog shit this morning and yesterday and the whole week. Um, super case of like burnout, I think, which yeah burnout is real um especially when you're juggling multiple things and you're getting your period because you guys know how that is it really sucks um i'm happy to report that my pms is significantly better i think just through balancing my hormones i've really been working on lowering my cortisol levels um my, my balancing my insulin and it is helping i'm actually sleeping through the night which hasn't been the case in so long i haven't been able to sleep through the night which is crazy um i look like i have her in a headlock and i don't it has made a big difference um in how i feel at night and how i'm waking up in the morning which is really cool to see like my hard work starting to pay off i feel smaller my face looks thinner i look less bloated and round which honestly like that's been a problem for so long um, and it takes a long time to figure out what your body needs just learning yourself she's over it oh she's not over it <laughs> and just learning yourself and learning what feels good and you know making habit changes it's not easy I've talked about this the last like couple of episodes and um, I finally feel like my work is paying off everything that I'm doing is working together and I'm really excited because I've always had like this hormonal weight gain and it just sucks I've never been on birth control or anything like that my body just does what she wants to do but I'm going away next week so I I'm like excited that I'm not gonna feel bloated and fucking huge and I'm gonna feel like myself but I mean I feel like even on camera like I just look like more defined and that's amazing and it also was amazing to not be an angry bird for fucking two weeks of the month because my PMS was so fucking like elongated also doing like the work and being consistent has been great. I've still been consistent with moving my body at least four times a week. Last week I did five, which I even like surprised myself. I think working out at home has made such a difference for me. Like I just like it so much more. I'm not a gym girly. Um, I, I think if we get a house at some point, it will be really nice to maybe have some sort of home gym so I can have like heavier weights but I honestly just don't even care about that I love like girly workouts <laughs> I love Pilates and we say girly and they're not like girly at all because the core strength that you need to be on a reformer if you've never done it before don't speak until you do it but I love working my core and feeling really strong and I've I've just been consistent and it feels really good and I'm walking a lot more this week I started tracking to make sure I'm getting enough protein in and it feels really nice to be like letting go of feeling like so restricted, you know, I'm moving my body, if I want to have a piece of bread, if I want to have something sweet, like I can, I'm just doing it in a way that makes more sense with my body type and with how i respond there are certain things i don't respond well to and i know that they're gonna bloat me and i have to like 
be mindful of that. So it's been really nice to feel good, even though I have my period and even though I have cramps and all the things, I feel so much better than I did even a month ago. This is the best I have felt in like years, if I'm being fucking so honest with you. And I really think it's because my my hormones, my stress hormones, I'm trying to keep them as low as I possibly can. And I'm really trying to listen to myself, like listen to my body. I know my body better than anyone. And when people try to tell me things that I need to do, I just get so annoyed or when they doubt me because I'm always right about what my body needs. And intuitively trusting it and I'm learning how to eat more intuitively and not overeat and because I do have an issue with that and my body's responding really much better to this calmer way of approaching my health and um I'm really excited about it so <laughs> figured I'd share that with you guys I also slept with mouth tape for the first time last night I literally have it next to my bed I got the Skinny Confidential one. It comes in this really cute case. They give you like 45 mouth tapes, I think, for like 35 bucks. Um, they're so cute because they're little lips. The Skinny Confidential, like Lauren Bostick is going to make me buy everything. I have her ice roller. I want her body brush. I want all of it. It's all so cute and pink and girly. Um, I slept so good. Benefits of mouth tape are awesome. Um, your breath is better. Like literally I woke up this morning and I didn't even have like crazy morning breath. Like obviously I needed to brush my teeth, but like, you know, in Mean Girls when <laughs> Lindsay Lohan says her breath stinks in the morning and the girls are like, ew, that's because they were sleeping with mouth tape. <laughs> um, my breath wasn't crazy at all. And, um, I am someone that sleeps with their mouth open. So it does help with def definition in your jaw because you're not like that creating this like weakness in the muscle. I don't know if you guys know, but this is a muscle that you can work out. Like your double chin area is also like a muscle. And if you feel it when you talk, you can like literally feel it. So when you sleep with mouth tape, you keep your mouth closed instead of hinged open it makes sense, right? Because how is that going to be like strong if it's always like not being actively worked? And the only time mine is worked is when I'm clenching and grinding my teeth, which is not good. So that's another benefit. Um, and you breathe through your nose, you sleep better. And I did actually sleep really good last night. And then I tongue scrape after that. Um, once I take the tape off, I tongue scrape. Tongue scraping is amazing for your gut. Everyone should be doing it. It's great for your breath. It's great to get all of that mucus. I think I've spoke about this before. And then flossing, obviously, whatever. I'm just taking you through my morning routine <laughs> with this addition. So you guys should definitely try that, especially if you're not sleeping through the night. Usually means like that your cortisol and insulin can be up and also, um, or if you're eating too late or having too much sugar at night, like your sugar levels will spike and then you have trouble sleeping. Obviously stress causes it too. Um, but yeah, being a mouth breather is not great. So I'm really excited to keep using these and seeing where it goes. So yeah, that's my little like catch up. I just filmed a get ready with me catching up on all the VPR reunion part one stuff. So I'm going to do like reality recaps in my get ready with me is I'm calling it the girls room group chat. So if you guys want to watch those, I will be posting them kind of randomly. Those are my bonus episodes, but I think that's a better place for me to talk about all of the pop culture stuff that I like. I feel like on this podcast, I really want to talk health and wellness, growth, and all of those things because I am like multifaceted. I'm like an onion. I'm very layered and I love to get deep, but I also love reality TV. There's a time and a place for all of those things. And I feel like my get ready with me's are cute little fun, short ways to try new products, try new skincare, makeup, hair, all the things that I also love outside of being serious and getting deep because I'm honestly the most unserious person if you know me personally and 
if you only know me through this podcast, I think she shines through once in a while. <laughs> I'm usually laughing kind of goofy and I like to stay that way. So, um, that, that will be for that. So if you guys want to know what I think about VPR, Housewives, Bravo stuff, you can check out the girls from group chat and I will start branding it that way and make a playlist and you can see it right here on YouTube. So anyway, for episode 20, I wanted to talk about something I heard Mel Robbins talk about, which if you don't know who she is, she's incredible. Um, and that's called the let them theory, which this is also something that's kind of been coming up in some conversations that I've recently been having with some of my friends. And the let them theory is really as simple as it sounds, it's about controlling the controllable and letting people do what they're going to do, which is something that I've talked about before, whether it's a friendship or a relationship, any type of relationship in general, your actions can't be dictated by how you think someone is going to perceive you or how you think they're going to react and respond. You can't operate from a place of of predicting what someone may or may not do you can't it's like when people say if you never ask the answers always no right so it's kind of that same it ties into that same sort of mentality so letting them just do what they're gonna do and fully detaching from an outcome i think is so so powerful when you start operating from a place of you're doing it because it's what's right for you, whether that's having a hard conversation, whether that's detaching and seeing if that person will come forward and try and reach out to you, whether it's you needing to take the step to talk to them, whatever it is, it needs to bring you the peace, right? Because if you're relying on anybody else to bring you peace and closure, it's almost a scam like the closure thing I learned kind of the hard way it's a little bit of a scam like I really feel that in most instances you have to give yourself closure because if you are relying oh, I get so itchy you have to give yourself closure because if you are relying on someone else to give you that closure or someone else to say something to make you feel better you're kind of setting yourself up for failure because you can't wait for someone to give that to you because they might not be able to give it to you or they might not even be on the same playing field as you we've got to remember like emotional maturity we've got to remember where people are at in the in their stage of life and meeting them where they're at is something that's super important or saying what you need to say and just letting go of whatever that outcome is and that can be like really scary right like if you want to reach out to someone and you don't know what their response is going to be but all you know is that you can only control your reaction to their response. So if they're super reactive and you're just like not in that place or looking for that, you just kind of need to be like, this isn't where I'm at. Like if you want to have a conversation that's productive, we can, but this is what I wanted to say. I think that an effective way can be through writing if you want to do something like that if you feel like it's more effective but i just feel like the power of letting go in every aspect is something that we all can and should master because you cannot leave your life in someone else's hands you can't be accountable for how someone is going to react period dot end of story like that's not your responsibility your responsibility is to let them react however they're going to react your responsibility is to detach from an outcome your responsibility is to make sure that you're right with you and that you are doing what makes you feel good so if it feels good for you to apologize then do that if it feels good for you to not do anything then don't if you want to let them come to you 
then let them come to you. And if they don't, then they don't. But you just, the whole thing is not being attached to a certain reaction or behavior that you think is going to come good or bad. You need to let them do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> and this applies to yourself too. You got to let yourself do it because I think that so many people operate from a place of like ego, right? Do you want to reach out to a certain person because you feel like you need to prove that you're right or because you feel like you need to get in your like last word or is it really because it's to make you feel better in a way that's not ego driven so it's like let's say you have a fallout with a friend which i recently did go through something like this and you feel like you want to reach out to them and it feels like the right time you you can do it but i didn't reach out to this person because i expected them to be my best friend again or i expected them to receive me or even answer me i didn't know what i was getting but i just felt like i wanted to reach out to them and say how are you i know it's been a while whatever and honestly it was received well we had a conversation a couple times and that was it like nothing crazy it just felt good to like know that there was like clearing of any like bad energy especially when you're friends with someone for like a really long time right but in doing so i did it just because i wanted to not because i wanted to argue not because i wanted to talk about anything that had gone on i just wanted to wish them well because i was thinking about them and certain life events that they were going through that i wanted to congratulate them for and and let them know that i'm happy for them because i still love them even if we haven't spoken but that person very well could have like not even responded to me you know so i wasn't attached to what the outcome was going to be i just knew that for me it felt right to have that conversation at that time and to tr or to try to just say hey i'm so happy for you how are you that type of thing like that's it i wasn't up for anything other than that and so this is obviously situational but i think like just really leaning into detachment and the power of detachment in life is just so powerful because i really do believe believe what the hell <laughs> i really do believe that we are like destined to do certain things and it just needs to unfold like on its own like i don't know if it's fate i don't know what the right word for it is but i feel like i stopped trying to fight my fate and i stopped trying to be attached to what i thought my life should look like and attached to a certain outcome i just do what feels right now and i just go where i'm pulled and in doing that i'm giving this like trust in the universe that I'm where I'm supposed to be and there's a reason I'm being pulled in in this direction like this podcast for example like me cutting back from the salon like me trying a new job and maybe those things aren't permanent changes but I know that I'm being pulled to them for a certain reason especially this podcast I feel there's a reason I'm so consistent with it there's a reason I show up despite what may be going on in my life personally there's a reason that i am here for 20 episodes now i think i only missed one week in that 20 weeks like it's just crazy and um you know i think that once you are just like okay let me let go of this picture that i had and allow for something new to come in because maybe it's better than the picture that I have because we always think we know best and sometimes we do but sometimes you just gotta like go with the flow of life and go where it's taking you and I think like COVID taught me that and probably many other people like shit happens when you don't who could have predicted that like I certainly couldn't have that was just crazy i would have never thought that in my lifetime that would have happened if someone had said to me even a week before it happened that we were going to be closed the world was going to be sh literally shut down like i was gonna be out of work for six months and it was going to change the trajectory of my life i would have never thought of it and i'm talking about in every way my job my my romantic life my friendships 
everything changed. My home, I moved five times in two years in like 2020, 2021, just like crazy. So I couldn't have predicted that. And it taught me that like, I can't predict anything. So why don't I just go where I'm pulled, do what my gut's telling me to do? Because when I don't follow that intuition, I am so miserable and I think that's why I was so unhappy for a good chunk of time was because I was just pushing it down like I didn't want to deal with it like why Clarissa why do you have to fucking blow your life up why do you have to change careers why is your body telling you to do this why is your intuition telling you to do this why are you getting signs to do this and I just didn't want to deal with this so I was just pushing it down and pushing it down by doing that I was just making myself so much less happy by ignoring what I needed and I'm never doing that again I'm just never doing it again I was doing it in every aspect of my life I was not happy in so many different ways and I just wasn't allowing myself to say hey you're not happy like and face the things that weren't making me happy because they were all big big fucking things I was like holy shit and I'm always someone that needs to feel happy that goes for the things that makes me happy but like it was so overwhelming to feel like I needed to change every aspect of my life to find happiness because that's what I had to do and let me tell you it isn't easy and it doesn't feel good until it feels good and then when it feels good it's like the best feeling ever but it doesn't feel good and it doesn't feel good for a long time those growing pains are like like literally I feel like you know like when a werewolf is becoming a werewolf in movies and then you hear like all their <coughs> like bones cracking and shit that's what growing pains felt like to me like I was like not turning into a werewolf but <laughs> like it just felt like everything was fucking getting snapped and broken and all of this so that I can like evolve and be where I'm at and I'm not fully you know out of this transitional phase but I'm so much happier because I am like just letting things be and I'm not tying myself to my finances I'm not tying myself to anything outside of me and who I am as a person and focusing on the good things around me and the love around me and really trying to stay in a place of gratitude now am I like that every day no I have really bad weeks especially when I'm PMSing the last two days I was down in the dumps like not fucking good couldn't get any work done couldn't focus at all and I just kind of let go and said you know what you're not feeling good why don't you go walk so that's what I did I walked outside a lot with Luna my baby and I just allowed myself the space to not really do much and try not feel guilty about it i still feel guilty about it but i do also feel burnt out um i am working six days a week and i'm very happy to be because i'm working for myself but working for yourself is like a whole nother beast because you need to like make things happen for you which is totally fine I can do that but doing it every single day it's tiring and um but you still gotta do it right so I still show up here I'm I'm here this week despite how I felt the last couple days and I'm happy when I'm here like I love making these podcasts even if two people watch you know and I think it says a lot because when you're doing something for yourself and you start a business or you start anything that's new you are basically like a comedian performing for an empty room or a room that doesn't laugh or a DJ that's opening for some huge DJ and you're the opening set at like friggin' 6 p.m. and nobody's there because it's so early and everyone's getting there at 1 a.m. and you're literally playing to maybe two of your friends who want to be there for you and the rest is an empty room. Social media is the same thing. When you're using social media for a business like I do whether it's your full business or whether it's an addition to your business it's you're playing for an empty room like for a long time before you get any traction and the only way you get traction is through consistency and you have to be consistent with yourself because if you're not consistent you're never going to get where you want to be and you're not going to know what to do if you did like if you don't show up every single week in whatever the thing is or every single day for yourself 
you let's say I tomorrow and I've said this before like if I didn't show up to this every week and tomorrow out of nowhere I got 5,000 fucking followers let's keep it even on a, on a low number if let's keep it to, to something 2,000 followers 5,000 followers if I didn't do this for the last 20 episodes and I was super inconsistent I didn't care about my editing I didn't you know show up regardless of how I was feeling and just to remind myself I chose to do this because I love it and enjoy it if I didn't do that and the next and and I randomly just gained a bunch of people that wanted to listen because they saw a clip or something went viral or something like that let's say I would have no clue what to do with that audience or how to retain that audience or how to keep that audience so I think playing for an empty room is crucial to the success and growth of like any business, any artist, any entrepreneur, anything like that, you like have to fall on your face, you have to make mistakes, and it's how you recover from those mistakes that matters, and you also need to get comfortable talking to your damn self. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like the bottom line and at this point I'm very comfortable talking to myself and it's a little nervous thinking oh my god I could have more than 10 people but it's fine like I, th I feel confident that like I'm aligning myself with this bigger purpose because I'm showing up every single week and doing it regardless if I have two plays or 200 plays it does not matter because it's not about that it's about putting in the work showing up and being prepared and aligned for whatever is going to come through for you because you're putting the work in and I think it's just really important and that's part of letting go like knowing that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and letting go of the outcome is like super super important to your growth not only as a person but as a business owner as an artist as a creator all of these things because you can't start at up here some people have that they're lucky and they can blow up and some know how to retain it and they do an amazing job at retaining that audience or that business or whatever and then you see other businesses or people that don't that they just it falls flat because they didn't know what to do with their audience or buyer or, who, or whoever they're targeting you know so I just think like you have to show up for yourself no matter how hard it might feel because Things like just get harder and more complicated the more successful that you are in your endeavors like they don't get easier they get harder there's more pressure there's more eyes on you and that can be like really stressful and I think that the only way I think the only way to prepare for that is by doing and just pretending and being a little delusional <laughs> and you know for me I have celebrated every milestone um in this podcast I celebrated my first 10 episodes my best friend sent me balloons to the apartment because I was so excited that I had episode 10 I'm now hitting I'm now hitting 20 episodes which I'm so proud of I have celebrated from 10 followers to 110 followers on YouTube because that's where I'm at now. I have like 58 or 59 on Spotify. None of it I ever looked at as like, oh, I only have 50 followers or oh, I only have 10 views on this episode. My episode 18, Curing a Case of the Uglies, got like 200 something views, which was really high for me. Um, for like just a random episode and I was like so proud of that episode because I'm like wow but I wasn't like having an expectation that it would like do better than my others and some people might say 200 views that's not a lot imagine 200 people sitting in a room listening to you speak or um absorbing your content like that's a lot like in a room like 10 20 people's a lot in a room so i think the way that you look at it is super important and once you detach from that it also is freeing and so many people use the internet now in their businesses and um or are content creators or you know podcasters or whatever it is and i think that it makes it a lot easier and takes a lot of pressure off when you have a new set of eyes on it and your glass is half full rather than half empty 
perspective is literally everything and I think like that's something that a lot of people don't have anymore there's no perspective um, on how good life can get or how bad life could be and I think sometimes people think like life is so bad and and I think sometimes it's just a perspective shift um, obviously everyone has hardships and I can't speak for everyone and some people do have really 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 hard lives or mental health problems or whatever and it's not never to discount that but sometimes the way that you view things does change it because I used to get so upset when I would have a hundred views on something and now I, I celebrate that I have a hundred views on something now I'm sell I, I celebrate all these milestones like TikTok will humble the fuck out of you I posted a TikTok yesterday that still has one view like <laughs> I could laugh or cry about that right TikTok isn't my you know I gave up on TikTok a little bit it's not my uh we don't mesh like I'll post stuff on there just because I have the content so why not but like I took my eggs out of that basket <laughs> now I post on YouTube shorts and reels and Pinterest but anyway I thought that that was like an important thing to touch on I know I kind of mended a few topics but all in all I think the important message here is that you have to let go and you gotta let God <laughs> right that's what they say I'm not super religious I do believe in God and the universe and all those things I don't believe really in organized religion and church and you know things like that um they give culty a little bit I don't like it at all so that's not something that I do but I believe in a different way I believe in the power of the universe and I do believe there is a God and when they say let go and let God I think that it's kind of true like just like let your hands go as my dad would say you let your hands go let my hands go and just show up and be like a little bit more unserious about it and not take everything to heart and it just makes it a little bit more fun right because we have enough things to be stressed about so like we don't need to be stressed out about social media I'm talking to myself right now I guess <laughs> and you also need to not be stressed out by outcomes that haven't happened yet conversations that haven't been had reactions you haven't gotten things that you cannot control like obviously it's easier said than done but I do think that there are practices to help relieve some of that stress and anxiety that kind of comes with these things and I think it's important to have those tools in your tool belt so that you can utilize them that way when something comes along that like you really really like are stressed about that you can't control it doesn't feel like such a pile on you know because you're able to let go of some of the things don't sweat the small stuff it's so true and um do what feels right for you make good with yourself be happy with who you are and do the things that are not driven from a place of ego that are not driven from a place of anger or resentment or any of those things you know try to really evaluate and be introspective when you're making decisions about certain things and definitely don't act out of emotion that's something that i really had to learn to not act out of emotion you gotta like sit with things for a second before you have like a freak out because it, it can be so easy to have a freak out I've had many of them and at the end of the day it just usually makes me feel shitty so before reacting in anger and reacting from that place of hurt I think it's so important to just take a breather <laughs> so that's something I really wanted to touch on today I hope it was helpful for someone um, because it definitely has been helpful for me to let go and let them thanks Mel Robbins for that let them do what they're gonna do just make sure that you're doing what you have to do so that you feel good about yourself you're not hurting others and you're moving from a place of love and that you're doing productive things, having productive conversations, and knowing when to walk away from things that aren't productive and aren't good for you. So that's my message for today. Uh, I'll end with my high and low of the week. My low of the week is that I just haven't been able to get any work done really, which kind of sucks ass because I'm gonna be piling on more work for myself next week, but it is what it is and my high of the week is that I'm filming episode 20 right now and I'm proud of myself so 
<laughs> I'll give myself a hug. <laughs> um, 20 episodes is definitely something to celebrate. And just a reminder, there will be no new episode next week because I will be on vacation. And I'm thinking about maybe doing a little vlog about vacation. I'm not sure if I want to commit to that yet. It's only three nights, so I don't know if I want to like spend my time recording. I'm not great at vacation content other than pictures, but we'll see. If I put together a, a vlog or something, then I'll put that out and that will be like the episode for next week just here on YouTube. Um, if not, I'll see you the week after. We'll just kind of see how it goes. So thanks for tuning in for another episode. If you have questions, problems, concerns, stories you want to share, please send it to tgrpod.nyc at gmail.com uh, or let me know in the comments if you have anything you want me to talk about and make sure you check out the girls room group chat content <laughs> that I will be posting, which are my get ready with me's if you want the reality recaps. So thanks so much for joining me. I love you. Have a good week. Bye.